Hello everybody, this is BeastCat100 and welcome back to some more Blaze Blue Chrono Phantasma Extend. In the previous episode, we had finished the Sector 7 story with Episode 9, The Beast. And with as short as it was, it, it gave us quite a bit of information on at least Relius's end of what's trying what's going on. They are trying to resurrect the Black Beast. And we, we found out the truth behind the Ikaraga Civil War. It was set up to gather souls in the cauldrons to, well, to make the Black Beast the first time. And Relius is trying to do it again. And we also found out that if, uh, if you didn't know already, the nail on the end, on the back of, of Bang, the, the one that he carries around, is the core to Ko Kushinata's linchpin. So, it took a couple of games, but we finally found some, uh, some very big relevance for Bang. And what a, uh, what a reveal that was. But we're not done with everything yet. We're going to be moving on to episode 6 today of the Six Heroes Path, our father's research, and we're going to find out what happens after the meeting between Nine, Ragna, Celica, and uh, Platinum. So, without... If, so, if you like what you see, leave a like down below. Comment if you have anything to say. Subscribe to me if you haven't already, if you haven't already clicked up, also notified of everything that I do when I do it, and share with your friends so they can join in on this adventure. And now, without further ado, let us move on to Episode 6 of Father's Research. This place sure gives me the creeps. Look, it's connected all the way down. It's so deep. It's not just the depth that's amazing. This facility most likely used technology from the time of its construction. But if you take a closer look around, there's evidence of alchemy here and there. Looks like they've used a lot of alchemy and magic to dig this hole. I doubt anything man-made could do this alone. But it's not like mages are a dime a dozen, right? Most people outside the Mages Guild can't even use magic. That just goes to show how dangerous District 1 really is. That they would go this far. Science and magic, huh? I really don't know why those two have to be separated. Hmm. Huh. For someone who'd come up with such an obvious lie like Amnesia, you actually have a pretty solid perspective of the world. If only the higher-ups of this world felt the same way as you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obvious lie. I get it. Yes, well, stupidity is worthless here. <laughs> Why you? Ah, oh, almost had it. Almost had an understanding. Hey, look at that, you guys! Uh, Celica. Hey, don't just charge in. What do we find? Ugh. The last thing we need is for you to become lost here, of all places. Looks like you have a pretty tough time with that, too. Oh, you're asking to die, huh? Stop being so familiar. <sighs> oh, thank goodness. I made it. Hey, I think this thing still works. By this thing, are you referring to the elevator? I see. It would be much easier to take this straight to the bottom than slowly make our way down. Yeah, I don't think there are any living creatures here, let alone humans. Do you know how to work this? Of course, it's not that different from today's elevators. Come on now, get in, get in! Well, excuse me, this might not be the right time. But I feel a little excited. Oh, it's okay, Trinity. So do I. Because <laughs> I think I know what we're going to find down there. It's actually pretty well built. Yeah, I think there's some magic that's protecting it from external harm, which is why it's lasted this long. I wonder if Father's here. Isn't that what we're here to find out? Yeah! Hmm. 
After taking the long elevator ride down, Celica, Ragna, and Nine finally made it to the deepest part of the research laboratory. When they stepped out, it was a completely different atmosphere from when they where they entered the facility. The walls and ceilings that were once plated with metal sheets had been torn asunder, exposing the earth beneath. By what appeared to be claw marks, much too large to be any to belong to any creature. The equipment that filled the lab was was all uprooted and tossed aside like miniature toys. The cause of it of it all lay at the end of the hallway, a cauldron opening a giant mouth that unleashed chaos upon the world. The strange eerie feeling that uh, filled that uh, the strange eerie feeling that filled this space was de most definitely came from the magma colored crater which was left behind. This is the cauldron where the black beast came from? Mm hmm. <sighs> the gates to hell. Not a place humans should be. Just stay way back, Celica. Yeah. You too, Hotshot. Y yeah. We shouldn't stay here any longer. Let's hurry up and... Uh, uh, Trinity? Trinity, who was, only with, who was with them only moments ago, had disappeared. After searching, they found her looking at a wall that saw some sheet metal covering it, bending down for a closer look. What are you doing over there, Trinity? Um, I think there's something here. Where Trinity had pointed, the metal panels were warped in a strange manner. On the other side, it looked like there was an open space, neither man-made walls nor earth. Let me see that. He stuck the tip of his blade into the bent metal and used his leverage to, to pry the metal back. This looks like a path. Let's go! We might find some clues that lead to Father! Surprise Nan isn't stepping in to say no. It opened! Whoa! This is a pretty fancy secret room. It's a lot of research material. This is a very strange room. It's hard to believe this facility was completely shut down six years ago when the beast appeared, judging solely from the state of this room. The electricity is still running, and some of the machines are working. These documents look like they were printed recently. Hey, Ragna. I wonder what this is. Selica looked up at Selica looked up at what appeared to be a gigantic nail that was suspended with chains at the back of the room. Well, speaking of... Uh, um, speaking of the Retenjo... It's beautiful! Hey, isn't this it? It looks exactly like what's on these blueprints. Bradna picked up a piece of paper that was by Selica's feet and handed it to her. You're right. They're the same. Is this some sort of device? Uh, huh? Isn't this... What's the matter? Ragna, here! This writing, it's my father's. You're sure? Yeah, there's no mistaking it. I remember exactly what his writing looked like. So you mean your father created this? At the very least, he had a part in the blueprints. So what is this thing anyway? It looks a little big to be part of the interior. Yeah, it doesn't say what it's for in the blueprints. Nine? How dare he? How rotten can he be? As Nine slammed the papers onto the desk, they slowly fluttered back down onto the ground where she had initially found them. Nine found a piece of paper in the pile and stomped on it with all her might. What are you doing, sister? That's father's- Yes, without a doubt it's his. It's the concept and blueprints for that device. Unbelievable. Only he would be able to make something this outrageous! Wait a sec. Could you explain it so we can all understand it too? You're the only one snapping here and we're clueless. Nine, please calm down. <sighs> Twisting her expression, Nine clenched her teeth and suppresses her anger. 
The boundary is overflowing with a substance we call Seether. From that ominous gaping hole we call the Cauldron, it flows out into this world. Most of the Black Beast was made from this Seether as well. In other words, the Boundary and the Black Beast are like clumps of Seether. But this thing, it can stop the flow of Seether. Stop the Seether? What would happen if you do that? Simple. In other words, they can stop the Black Beast. What? Stop the Black Beast? That's possible? Yes, this is Kushinata's linchpin. It stops the flow of Seether completely. And... It's a worthless piece of junk, created by a worthless scientist. When Nine took her stance, lightning began to, f began to form in her hands, constantly growing. Hey! What the hell are you gonna do? Obvious. This shouldn't even exist. You can't do that! Father made all of this, it might be able to stop the Black Beast! It could save the world! I'll erase it without a trace! What? Nine! Nine Sunder was directed at the linchpin. However, faster than it could reach a target, a shadowy figure leapt out of nowhere and deflected the bolt. What had jumped into the scene was... Sorry, but I cannot let you destroy this. Hi, Mitsuyoshi! A beastkin? Mitsuyoshi, what the hell are you doing here? Have you forgotten, Ragna? The one who gave you the map was Clavis. He originally intended for me to investigate this place. I've heard everything. If the linchpin has the power to stop the Black Beast, then I suggest we activate it immediately. His mannerism was subtle, yet the tip of his blade still pointed at its target, as if it were a silent threat. Such beautiful form, yet you spout out nonsense. You were listening, right? I won't let you activate that. Why? Do you have any idea the state this world is in? Surely you are aware, as a member of the Ten Sages. Nine. And you're the Alucard's little pet. Clavis Alucard has grown senile. Answer the question. Why would someone of your stature, of the Mages' Guild, conceal a method to save the world? Have you gone mad? Save the world? <laughs> you don't understand anything. Do you think this device is capable of such a thing? This isn't some weapon to defeat monsters. It will merely stop it. The Black Beast will continue to exist. Even so, it would be much better than to not use it at all. Mankind needs more time. I'm not talking about time to simply evacuate those in need, but time to arm ourselves with what is necessary to defeat that monster. Nine, I agree with Mr. Mitsuyoshi. If we don't do something, the world may really come to an end. Even if it only stops the Black Beast temporarily, there's a chance it could save many lives. If it's really troublesome to activate, then I'll help you. If this device can make the lives of even a few people easier in this world, then I think that will be amazing. Don't be so foolish. It sounds to me like there's a reason you don't want to use this device. Could you tell us what that is? Otherwise, I think there's no convincing these two. <laughs> this thing, this device, as it stands, it's just a decoration. You could toss it into the boundary right now and nothing would happen. You need a source of energy that will work where electricity and magic don't. Not an explosion or jolt of energy, either. It needs a constant stream of controlled energy. Way more than a battery can offer. But where can you find such a source of energy? Don't tell me... Souls. Stop beating around the bush. What the hell is it, then? Don't you get it? A human. Or that. What? Human. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Okay, well, I mean, I was close. I said souls. The human soul may be a little unstable, but it has a flexibility with which no program or system can compete. And unlike machines that require cables, or mages, which require their will to be constant, as long as the person lives, so will it. Not any human can become the driving power behind the linchpin. It needs to be someone adept at controlling the flow of life. 
For example, someone who excels at healing magic. Uh, do you mean me? Aselica pointed to herself and said those words. Everyone in the room turned to look at her. And for a few moments, we were at a loss for words. In the painful silence, finally Ragnar scratched his platinum hair and spoke. So, uh, to sum it all up, this Kushinata's linchpin needs to use a human as its fuel, and on top of that, it has to be Selica? That's why she's the activator for Kushinata's linchpin, because nobody else knows healing magic. I would say the key to an engine is a better description than fuel. Since Selica was little, even before we both learned magic, she had amazing healing powers. That man, Shuichiro, must have been collecting that data and using it for his research. And finally, he used it as a part of the linchpin. There are very few people who can use healing magic. And at Selika's level, fewer still. In other words, he built this device with the intent to use Selika as the key from the very beginning. And if you use it, what happens to Selika? Her soul will merge with the object, and her life will be slowly drained from her. Little by little, until in the end, nothing remains. And when her life has ended, that monster will revive. As though nothing had happened. How can I possibly allow that? Even then, if we continue on the path we're currently on, the end will come. The end, which we must avoid at all costs. Humanity needs a trigger. Something to turn the tide. No matter the sacrifice, we need this opportunity. We don't need this thing to fight the beast. You want me to take it on? Sure, I will. If that were possible, then no one would be living in fear of the beast right now. Too many lives have already been lost for us to be talking about best cases. I know how you feel for your sister. But when the world is at the brink of destruction and beyond saving, can you still look back on this moment and say that nothing could have been done? I will not let Selica become a sacrificial lamb. If you insist, I will destroy you. I don't have a choice. Even I cannot back down from this easily. Several balls of light fly from Nine's hands. Mr. Yoshi dodges some and deflects others. Dodging a barrage of vacuum-like blades of air that followed Nine's attack with a huge leap, Mr. Yoshi closed the distance. I don't want to hurt you. Back off. Don't underestimate me. Mr. Yoshi has nine at the edge of his blade. However, it was pushed back by an electrical bolt, which nine produced almost instantaneously. Instantly. You are one of the ten sages, after all. Not just your power, but your casting time. I could say the same. You're a lot better than an average house cat, I'll give you that. I cannot watch the world crumble before my eyes. And I won't let anyone take advantage of Selica. Bearing the weight of their ideals be behind each blow, Mitsuyoshi's blade and Nine's lightning strikes clashed one after another. The room shook, despite being deep inside the earth. Both of you, please stop this! Having had enough, Selica tries to jump in between the two. But before she could, Rodna grabbed her by the arm. Wait. You weren't gonna jump in there all alone, were you? That's dangerous. But... I know. We need to stop these two idiots, right? Ragnar grabbed his slab of his sword with his moving hand, and mustering up all his strength, threw it in the middle of the ongoing battle. Why you? The blade made a graceful arc that placed it directly between the two, ending up stabbing into the ground. Stop this crap. What the hell are you guys thinking fighting like this in the lab? No matter who wins this battle, this is still Selica's choice. It's her life on the line. That's... <clears throat> I know you guys have a lot on your mind, but how about we calm down a little bit first? You too, Selica. Everyone, I'll pour us some tea. So let us take a break. Mitsuyoshi, you're welcome to join us as well. Yeah. Hmm. Things are getting a little tense. Trinity prepared enough tea for everyone, with, and with warm cups in all their hands, a few moments passed. 
Sonika leaned against the wall, sitting on the ground, with the teacup still pressed against her lips. She stared at Kushinada's linchpin. Nine, on the other hand, seemed to be doing her best to keep the artifact out of view. Trinity, meanwhile, was trying to boot up and boot up some of the computers. Mitsuyoshi was at the entrance of the room, a few paces away from the band of friends. Ragna was nowhere to be seen. Saying something about wanting to cool off, he went, made his way towards the cauldron outside the lab. Kushinata's linchpin. The device that can stop the Black Beast. I know how Sister feels, but... Selika? You know... Selika wa walked up to the linchpin and gently touched its cold, silvery surface. I love my sister. And not just my sister, but father, Trinity, Mr. Mitsuyoshi, and Ragna, too. I hate watching people I love getting hurt. I don't like painful memories, and loved ones hurting other loved ones, too. Which is why, if there's something that I can do, something that will save lives, I want to do it. Selika, stop that! Do you have any idea what you're saying? Yeah. I think I do. No, you don't. You don't have a clue. Once the two bodies are merged, you'll never come apart again. You're not going to be human anymore. You're going to be inside that metal cauldron for the rest of time, with no one inside, slowly watching your life drain away. I'm sorry, sister. I... I'll make you sad, won't I? Obviously. But I want to use the linchpin. Selika... But that's... <clears throat> yeah, it's not that I'm afraid. I just hope that, while I'm working hard on the inside, everyone out here can have a moment to rest up and eat up. And then we can all put our minds together after that, to defeat the Black Beast. Celica. That's why I... <laughs> I had a feeling you were going to say something like that. Ragna... If you had just taken a little longer, this matter would have been settled. What, you can't settle something because I'm here? No, but when you're nearby, I feel like I'll lose all that determination I had. <laughs> and here I thought your mind was made up. And when I think about not being able to see you, I just feel so lonely. <sighs> Jeez. Don't make that face. Sh shut up! Don't worry. I won't sacrifice Celica. Huh? Take good care of her. Yes, of course. Celica, I gotta rain on your martyrdom parade here. No one's gonna use that linchpin. Huh? What do you mean? I mean, we're not gonna use this to stop the Black Beast. Think about it. You sacrifice yourself for the sake of the world. But what does that mean to those who love you? You think that's a world they'll want to live in? At the very least, I can guarantee your sister won't be happy. That's... But I can't pretend I didn't see any of this, and we can't let the Black Beast roam free! There's another way we can stop the Black Beast. One that doesn't require the linchpin. Another... way? Yeah. I'm not exactly sure how to explain this to you, but if you can get me really close to the Black Beast... It'll work. Do you mean you're going to become the sacrifice instead? Of course not. I'm gonna go in and come right back out, that's all. That's impossible! You can't get that close to the Black Beast, you won't come back alive! Unable to finish her sentence, Selika shook her head violently from side to side. I'll be fine. I can do this. I don't want you to have to face danger. You really are stupid, aren't you? Salika's expression was that of one who had run out of options. Ragna lightly, lightly bonks her on the head. Ouch! The same goes for me, Nine, and everyone else. We don't want you to sacrifice yourself either. I had a younger brother and a younger sister. Huh? You remember? Yeah. I remembered a lot of things thanks to you guys. My siblings would tell me how much they liked me. I'm sure, it was annoying sometimes, but when you come close to losing them, 
your sister probably feels the same way right now. I couldn't protect them when I should have. Which is why now, it's my turn. Huh? Also, you're underestimating the pain someone has to endure when they can't protect someone they love. They will drag it inside of them for the rest of their lives. <sighs> sister Salika turned to Nine. There she stood. Not not the Nine whom Selica was used to seeing, strong, powerful, always cool. But a girl who was on the verge of tears at any moment. Selica, you said so yourself earlier. If you found a way that you could save everyone, you would. And so would I. I want to see all you guys smile. But... but... I want to see you smile too, Ragna. Then it's settled. I'm gonna go walk up to this beast that's terrorizing the world and take care of him. I'll come back too. Ragna... What the... What's that impact? Trinity! Yes, I'm trying to access the cameras on ground level. This... this is impossible! What... what the heck happened? I don't believe it. These numbers, this black fog, can only mean one thing. The Black Beast. <laughs> what is this? Seether is flowing from out of the cauldron, calling the Black Beast here. But why here? The Black Beast already destroyed this place. <laughs> Saved us the trouble of searching for you. How the hell can you be calm right now? Alright, if that's how you want it, we'll turn this back on you. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. Let's run. Run? What the hell are you thinking? I don't have time to explain. Nine, you can teleport, right? What? Teleport? I suppose I can, but it's not that simple, you know? Then start getting it ready right away, and stay as far away from me as you can. Ravna, are you going to stay behind on your own? You're against the Black Beast. We couldn't possibly leave you here. Yeah, I can fight too. Don't underestimate us. I can help with defensive magic as well. It's impossible to fight it alone. I appreciate the concern, but I can't have you stay behind. I don't know what'll happen the moment I make contact with that beast, and I don't want you guys to get caught up in it. What are you saying? I don't follow. Like I said, there's no time to explain. When I make contact, I think the beast is gonna stop moving for a year. In that time, you're gonna do some amazing stuff and in the very end, form the six heroes and defeat that beast. Six heroes? You mentioned them earlier, too. What are they? No time. Just remember, you are stronger than you know. Hurry up! You guys are gonna have a ton of work to do after this. I can't have you getting hurt and wasting everyone's time. Oh, okay. Everybody stay close to me. Sister! Yes, Nine. I'm staying behind. What the hell? Didn't you listen to a single word I said? My ears are pretty good. I'm also pretty confident that I'm stronger than you know. You'll never make it to the beast without me. Just think of me as a convenient projectile blocking anything coming your way. All right. I'm counting on you. You better make it. I don't know what you're planning on doing. But I'm looking forward to seeing it. Ragna! As if shaking something off, Selica stepped out of the, outside of the magic circle that Nine had summoned. You, you idiot, get back in! You said you would come back, right? You promised you're coming back! Yeah, I promise, kiddo. Here. Give the jacket. Hold on to these for me. I'll be back to collect them. Oh. Oh, okay. It, it wasn't just the jacket, it was the... Sword, too? Okay. Alright. Uh, okay, Ragna. I'll be waiting. Now go to your sister. Mm-hmm. 
Her skirt and long hair fluttered through the air as she ran back over to Nine. When Selica turned back to look Ragna's way, Nine's magic circle had already been completed. It's a promise! Ragna and Mr. Mitsuyoshi, you two have to come back! I'll be waiting! And that familiar teleportation sounds... And they're gone. Episode 7, Destined Rendezvous. We'll be tackling that next episode. So with that, thank you guys for watching. And see you guys later.